As part of this session, we'll talk about the introduction and history of it. We'll also talk about how the health coverage affects the federal income tax. So this is more into this. This also brings back the topic of Affordable Care Act. Marketplace statement and the architecture. What are the different type of forms involved? Some of you are already aware of these forms because you are on the receiver side of it. You are getting these forms. And also we'll talk about the architecture of the overall industry, how the marketplace is getting used and what are the different side of it. And then some forms and guidelines for the healthcare with reference to the IRS, which is Internal Revenue Services. Now, starting with the introduction and the history of it, in US, health insurance marketplace, also known as health insurance exchange, or you also hear the word or a term HIX, are organizations set up to facilitate the purchase of health insurance in each state in accordance with Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which was part of the ACA, that is also called as Obamacare. So all these things are interchanged and all these things are interlinked. How is that? So before we get into the more detail, let's understand a little bit about it. So as we see that President Obama promoted the concept of health insurance exchange as a key component of his health care reform initiative, which happened back in 2009. So the origin of this started back in 2009 in a smaller pieces and then when the full Affordable Care Act was passed, it kind of became legislation. Obama stated that it should be a market where Americans can one-stop shop for a health care plan, compare benefit and price and choose the plan that's best for them in the same way that members of the Congress and their families can. So moreover, the overall concept was it has to be one-stop shop for the healthcare need. So no matter what kind of a supplementer or a core benefit anyone is looking for, they should have one place where they can just go and sit and try to compare the benefits, try to compare the price, try to compare the overall what they are buying product. So this is more kind of a product, healthcare product, which is offered by the different payers, different organizations, different institutions who are into this business. This is no different than your uh, deals to buy or all those websites where you see that okay there are different products and you have an option to compare all the products and see that okay same set of benefit but what are the difference in the price and where exactly you are compromising with the price and getting better services, it's vice versa. So that is where the health insurance exchange overall started. Now talking about the health insurance marketplace statement, when we talk about it, what exactly we are trying to see here. See, number one thing you need to remember that was the very big change when the Affordable Care Act about the pre-existing condition and more open enrollment. So overall this open enrollment starts somewhere around March 31st of every year. That's what that coverage will, they will start taking up the new enrollments and the enrollment starts prior to that. So now talking about the marketplace statement, before we get there, first let's understand some of the things, then we come back to this topic. First let's look at the architecture. To understand the marketplace, it's very much important for us to understand the architecture of it. Now what do we see here? All the different parties involved here, but more what we need to understand is this, that's why it's highlighted in this. So what happens? This is the outreach where everyone is just creating an account and logging in and, and accessing the web portal which is the marketplace web portal. Through that, you, that member checks the eligibility, the employer checks the eligibility and try to see whether they are eligible or not based on that. But this eligibility database, you can see that how many organizations are associated with it. So you have a treasury, state agencies, Medicaid, CHIP, IRS, and then you have uh, the so, uh, Homeland Social Security, HHS, they all are utilizing this eligibility database. The reason being is because all the members and the employers who are looking for the insurance, all that information is very useful information for all these agencies. 
and they also contribute towards the information towards this for example think about it someone is trying to find the insurance and they enter some all their information under this database but the homeland security comes back and say that this person cannot be eligible because that information which is entered is wrong or maybe something related to the fraud anything is possible so all these agencies are working together to make sure that the correct eligibility is available and provided the right type of insurance based on the eligibility then it comes back to the shop and compare so now here as a member and that member could be your employer or the individual is trying to compare the health plan depending upon the information what they have provided so you enter that way you are looking for low uh, deductible and a higher level of benefit and all those type of what benefits you are looking for based on that you compare the health plan and then you get enrolled into the plan MMIS is nothing but a middle layer which keeps track of all the reports which are getting enrolled over here so this is kind of a messaging queue where no, not a single record not a single data is getting dropped that's what this MMIS is all about so it's kind of a messaging queue which keeps track of all the data so if the server is down it's not like that when you click on submit and you have submitted but for some reason on the server side the server is not running or there is an interruption there are too many records in the queue your data get lost no it will be queued and the moment the server will be up it will come over here so this queue is maintaining lot of things for example administrative service consolidated billing the administrative service and consolidated billing you can learn more when we talk about the EDI different transactions we can learn in those lines then you have the employer service and the notification underwriting billing and invoices customer service so what is happening on this when the employer registers the notification has to go to the employer along the line let's say the employer have purchased the policy from Aetna so the Aetna underwriter has to receive the alert that okay something has happened over there then if there is active policy the billing and invoicing has to work for the active policy customer service also needs to be alerted about that okay this person have purchased the policy so the record has to be available because if the person calls up Aetna and the customer service have no record not good so and then there are multiple interfaces you have maybe because there is a third party involved in it so there could be multiple interfaces available or you have the health insurance agencies so that is your main health plans which are certifying those products and then you have the health plan carriers which is your Aetna Cigna so for example whatever plans are getting offered by these carriers has to be certified plan and then only it can go to the bottleneck so this is the overall architecture in and out this is the body how it is working and this is how it is being affected to the outside world whether we see it or not but these agencies are aggressively working towards the accuracy of the data to, towards the correctness of the overall process now this is the overall architecture of the marketplace now let's go a little deeper into it we have the state exchange what exactly it means state ex exchange if you see they both are moreover communicating the same piece of information there is no difference but this is little bit broader as compared to this this is very high level then we go little further to understand that okay how the websites are there who are the navigators navigators are the agencies who got the contract to spread the word about spread the word about that Affordable Care Act and the marketplace and these companies these organizations was provided some amount in the form of a contract that if someone is looking to inquire about some info that it was moreover kind of a spread the word help the members to buy the right type of coverage so that was the job of the navigator if you want you can research this is a very good topic to know more about that okay navigators what exactly it is health insurance navigators or affordable care act navigator you can look for that 
So then again you have the enrollment and the eligibility and then see it's further broken down that the state and the Medicaid is handling the eligibility but at the same time you have a data hub which is working along the line with HSH, Health Insurance Services, Homeland, Social Security, Treasury, IRS to verify income, tax credit, subsidies if they are getting, cost reduction, verification of citizenship, residency and multiple reportings which happens to the HHS. So this is happening through the data hub which controls all these incoming and outgoing data. Then the plan comparison interface have multiple plans over here. And based on that, the online calculator calculates that what will be the premium for the given set of benefit which member have identified. Administration interface, admin, life event, etc. What exactly it means? If you see that, these are the third party associations, TPS, which is handling all the notifications, all the billing and the invoicing, all the customer service related calls or notifications. So if you see, these are both way communications. These are both way communications. All the communication, if you see that there is an input and there is an output. So we are putting some information. Based on that information, we are getting the output. That means each output is going to vary depending upon what input we have fed to the system. And on the communication interface side, again, the state agencies, they are doing their certifying and recertifying the health plans to make sure that how it works. And then you have multiple carriers. We are uh, uh, providing the services to the member community through the web portal. And they are the ones who controls the premium payments. So this is the detailed version of the architecture of the marketplace or healthcare exchange.